After arriving to the Children's Hospital, they did an emergency CT scan, and that's when they discovered that he had a mass that took up almost his entire left hemisphere. I whispered in his ear before surgery, fight. When Connor was six weeks old, he became very ill. He began crying inconsolably, um, irritable. In the 15 minutes it took me to pack up an overnight bag, get my husband awake, um, to get our plan together that we were gonna bring him to the emergency room. His left eye had swollen shut and there was a mass on his forehead. They prepped him for emergency brain surgery. They didn't expect him to survive. Connor's vital organs were shutting down. Six hours later, he made it through surgery. They were able to debulk and remove the entire tumor, which they hadn't expected to be able to do. Um, we were given the diagnosis um, four days later of congenital glioblastoma multiform stage four. It feels like I have so many things affecting me, I have to take so many pills. And then I eat, and then I have to take another set of pills. And then I have a ton of time, like the whole day until nighttime, then I take another set of pills. We were trying to adjust to life as a family and being connected. Um, and that's what we were doing for years and years and years. Then Connor turned nine, and the day after his ninth birthday, he had a seizure. It's really difficult to get to a point where you think everything's okay and to have it ripped up from underneath you again, to see your happy, lovable son who finds joy in everything, screaming and crying and wanting things to stop, and he's tired of it. It feels like something's going on in my head. I'm nervous about what's gonna happen next. So it just felt like, man, you know, after everything we've been through, why is this now happening? Why do we have to deal with this? Within a, f a few months time, it turned into uncontrolled seizures, seizures at school, having to get um, his entire care team at school. Um, so before we know it, we're meeting this world-renowned doctor in her field, and we agreed to have him go through two weeks of really intense testing. And unfortunately, there is seizure activity on the left side, there's seizure activity on the right side, it's crossing hemispheres. So they had proposed, um, the surgeon wanted us to come back and do a radio EEG um, and a functional MRI. Connor is now 10, so we were able to sit down with him and talk about this decision. We gave him all the options, explained it in a way that he could understand it. I said, what, what do you wanna do, buddy? He said, Mom, I just want to be free. When I first started here, working with Dr. Mortel and my previous mentor, we started a, a phase one trial using a um, tumor lysate. And being a big immunologist, we decided to follow the immune responses. And we actually saw some success. We saw in about 50% of the patients, we're talking the tumor lysate vaccine. There was a significant immune response and survival actually was extended. And in one of the cases, we did see a um, glioblastoma di disappear. Unfortunately, it reoccurred. So I'm not, it worked, it worked to a sense, but it didn't work well enough. And that's when I started looking into the cerebral spinal fluid of tumor versus non-tumor animals and actually discovered the CD200 protein, which is used to shut off the immune system. We saw that as these patients, either in the patients who didn't respond well to our therapy to begin with, their CD200 levels were very high. Those whose tumors came back later, we watched their CD200 levels go up as their tumors were fighting their way back. Correct. And so 
our whole point now is if we can wipe out CD200, we'll give our vaccine a greater advantage to pummel these tumors and keep them down. CNS tumors have been announced this year by the American Brain Tumor Association that it is the number one cause of mortality in children that's cancer related. The problem with CNS tumors is the checkpoint inhibitors that are being used are antibody based and antibodies do not cross into the central nervous system. So we decided to target this immune checkpoint with what we call a peptide inhibitor. Hopefully the fact that we're actually going intradermal instead of systemic is we won't induce toxicity, which we're seeing with a lot of immunotherapy. Very frequently the therapies can be quite harmful. Radiation to a growing brain can be devastating. Chemotherapy can have very difficult side effects. And then finally, we need to remember that radiation can cause cancer. And so giving radiation therapy, you're frequently curing cancer only to create another tumor later on. And the University of Minnesota has really led the way in teaching the world about late effects of radiation therapy and chemotherapy. So we think we can actually expand our model into many solid tumors. We think that it'll be actually a rock star to some peripheral tumors, including melanoma and hopefully prostate and um, ovarian cancers and, and breast, breast cancer. cancers as well. And every once in a while um, in the field of cancer therapy, these huge steps happen that make a big difference for a lot of people, and we really think this has a, the promise to do that. We've been doing this work for a long, long time now. CCRF, Dawn of a Dream, have been part of this work for, well, at least 15 years. The hardest parts, uh, um, probably, truthfully, raising money to do the work. My hardest part was going to the clinic and seeing kids who didn't have an answer. I don't want what I've seen to keep happening to other children in Absolutely. the future. That's why we work so hard to get this as quick as possible. That's the focus. That's the focus. Children's cancer research is important. It is important because these kids need advocates. They need someone figuring it out. They're not going to figure it out. Connor has a lot of perseverance. He's really happy all the time, and he's just all around a really good person. There's a lot to be proud of. His ability to make everybody around him feel happy. For today, for right now, for this week, everything's good, and it's amazing. Everything that he's gone through, everything, every battle, every challenge, everything that he's ever done, nothing's ever phased him. He smiles through it all, and he kind of looks at it and marches on and says, what's next? 